When we as humanity first started reaching out to the stars, we looked out with hope. We wondered what we would find out there, what new planets, what new sights we would behold in a nebula that would just change the color spectrum that we could understand it, what wonders everything would be there. But the one thing we wanted to figure out most of all was to answer the Fermi's paradox. Was there truly other life, sentient life, out there in the cosmos? Now the math says yes, but we wouldn't know until we verified it, and off we went into the stars for years, most of us using our medical technology just to stay in a type of stasis for long periods of time. The boredom, for most, got the better of them. But for the rest of us, just going out to the stars, sending our probes, getting everything we could back was more than exciting. The anticipation of them was usually more exciting than what we got, as most of the probes would simply scan a planet and find out that it was a simple rock, a gas giant, or had not developed any type of animal, any type of anything beyond the flora, no fauna at all. It was disheartening to say the least. And for several decades, humanity waited for something, anything, instead of sending a massive ship in every single direction, massive ships that would take years to build and hundreds to crew, out for years and years and years. It was just more economically feasible and a hell of a lot faster to send out probes that could simply go into each sector, scan it, and come back and re turn all its data so that we could analyze it and find out. And it was around this time that we finally received something, something that made everybody's ears perk up just a little bit. On this planet, which was very similar to Earth, it was its second planet from its star, we found out that there was a sentient species this sentient species had not only gotten beyond its own dark age, but it was well into its industrial age, if not a little further. If they hadn't reached their information age by the time we got there, they would soon reach it as we would help them along, as other species had done to us. Yet those species were unfortunately not around anymore as we kind of took care of them. We didn't like being manipulated. I know. Hypocrisy, right? Regardless of that, eventually we were sent out in several ships to their sector. It took a long time for us to finish building the ships to crew everyone, train them, and then send them out into the ether. Even with FTL speeds, it would take years to cross the cosmos. It had already taken years for probes to reach out and come back. But we set out with hope in our hearts and wide eyes. As we got close, we realized that there was something strange on the recording. Sometimes these probes would get close enough that they could actually scan the sentient species, and we wanted more and more, although it was very difficult to get any type of video, as the flora on this planet was incredibly dense. It seemed that most of the species stayed below the canopy, and we could see them moving around. We had heat sensors that we could see different groups. We could see them building their fires and things of that nature. We could kind of make the outside of their buildings. It was strange. We couldn't quite penetrate through, not without getting our probes so close that we might frighten them too much. It was going to be frightening enough when our ships actually descended down for us to see them. But one of the key things that came up was that they moved like us. Bipedal, two arms, two legs. But what really surprised us is when we got just the slightest bit of data on them, we found out that they were feline in nature. This made everybody wonder what in the ever-loving crap is going on. Were we starting to reach down the otaku path and Suddenly we're going to have cat boys and cat girls mixed in with our crew. This obviously made a few of our crew drool a little bit at the ideas. 
Yet, those ideas were promptly squashed, as many of us who actually were able to hold on to our own sanity smacked them around a little bit and brought them back to reality. It would still be a while before we reached our destination, and the last thing we need is these horny balls just going crazy, just in anticipation. So most of them stayed in stasis for the entire duration of the rest of the flight. When we finally got into their sector, it was a bumpy ride. There was a lot of gravitational fields that we had not quite picked up, so they simply pulled our ship left, right, up, down, center, and backwards a few times when we were not expecting it. Of course, injuries were common when that happens, but they were not anywhere near life-threatening. All of us were more than a little excited when we realized that they had tried to contact us. They had their own version of SETI set up. Now, it wasn't quite designed the way we would, but it was still functional. And as we got closer, more and more of their transmissions came out. And these transmissions came out simply in their language. Hello? We can see you. Could you answer us? Who are you? Simple messages like that gave us a lot of hope. Most of those in charge of the flotilla argued whether to send a transmission back. It wasn't until we got past their fifth planet as we slowly approached, trying to make sure we didn't get caught up in another one of those gravity wells, which made approaching very interesting. We sent a message to them. Yes, we hear you. We're coming to visit. It took a little bit for our computers to actually work out an algorithm so that we could match their speech, as their speech was strange. It was a lot of scritches and things like that. Basically, if you've heard a mixture of Russian and, well, cats howling at night, it sounds similar to that. It was difficult for us to even comprehend. Thankfully, our translators had been working just fine. In fact, they had to work overtime. And we had to adjust them to make them even better so that we could understand their language. As we began to approach, we were just outside their lunar orbit when we held up. We didn't want to get any closer as any of their three moons might cause us to uh, have some issues up here. So we simply send a message asking them, may we come down and say hi? They gladly agreed. And in fact, I was on one of the first ships that went down. A small, very small dropship. We didn't want to frighten them. It was completely unarmed. And except for those of us who had small arms attached to our hips, we were completely unarmed. We did not want to scare them at all, as first contact operations are always the most dangerous. And as we went down, we saw that they had built a platform just above the canopy. We looked and there was a small area where it seemed like a delegation was holding up. We could see some on the steps looking at us. We looked down and we could barely make them out waving at us, but we couldn't quite make out what they looked like. In anticipation, many of the otaku, as I mentioned before, were just about chomping at the bit to see their wonderful cat girls. They knew, they knew in their hearts that this was going to be it. They wanted, if nothing else, one of them to say, Meow, or as they put it, nya. I didn't understand this, nor did I care. But as the dropship's engine spun down, the ramp slowly opened. I was in the second line as we began to move down. We knew the atmosphere was good enough to breathe. In fact, it was kind of thick compared to Earth, only by about 12%. But still, you're looking at the difference between living in the Colorado Rockies and living on the plains. It's, uh, it can make a big difference fairly quick. And as we walked down, we looked over to see the delegation walking out and what we saw amazed us. Throughout all our history, we have always wondered what we would see. We had hoped beyond hope that we would be able to see something very similar to us something welcoming, something that would make us interested in them, not just for the 
ideas that you're thinking, but also to make it more comfortable for both sides to get along. As we had known, those that tried to guide us were humanoid, if you would say, but not quite close enough. It made people nervous. As we watched the delegation approach, we weren't nervous. We tried not to laugh. What walked towards us was two and a half foot tall tabby cats dressed in sparse uniforms, many of them holding their version of a rifle which was barely big enough to be considered a handgun to us. Without skipping a beat, I knew this was going to happen. One of the younger ladies behind us go, Oh, how cute! Immediately, we all snapped and looked at her, reminding her to shut her yap. The delegation walked up, and thankfully, they simply came up and welcomed us onto the planet. I'll tell you what. There's a lot of things that you could find out here in space. You can find all sorts of different plants. Many of them are edible and quite tasty. Others are enough to kill you just by being close. There are some critters that slither and crawl, even walk. Some that even fly that are just amazing to see how they came to be around their own planets. But nothing, I'm sorry, nothing is funnier than one of these guards of a tabby cat holding basically a pellet gun trying to look tough. After we were able to stifle our laughter, we responded with thank you for the invitation. And with that, our new friends have joined us out here in the stars. We try not to look at them as pets. But we always wondered what would happen if they met domesticated cats. Oh, crap.